Hey everyone, my name is Jennifer and welcome to A Vintage Vanity. I'm super excited for today's video because, well, you guys are here. And today you are all helping me to sew my stash. A few weeks ago, I asked you over on Instagram what row of fabrics I should sew from and you guys actually chose row B. Then, of course, I had to figure out what on that row I was going to be sewing. So I asked you, should I sew from a solid or a print, and about 84% of you chose a print. Now, before I get to the grand reveal of what I've chosen to sew with and what I've chosen to sew, I wanna stop and share the love. Today, we're gonna to be sharing the love with Emmy's Vintage, and you will find a link to her channel in the description box below. Honestly, I think you guys are really gonna love her style, especially if you like the swing style of the 1940s. She is a swing dancer based out of Germany, and she just really does that 40s style so beautifully. So head over to her channel. You're gonna find things like fashion lookbooks. You'll find vlogs. You will also find hair tutorials as well as one of my favorite of her recent videos, which was what she wore while on vacation in Italy. And I love Italy. So being able to like see it through this very like stylized video of hers mm, just put me in the mood of you know, Audrey in Roman Holiday. So go check her out. Now, I do have a bit of a confession to make, and that is all of the talking head portion of this video today was actually filmed after I finished the project. Let's just say I was on a bit of a struggle bus as far as, you know, brushing my hair and putting on clothing. So instead of like forcing myself to do it and having like forced enthusiasm, I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna wait until the project's done and then I'm gonna do the yada yada yada. So now it's authentic enthusiasm, but it also means that I am left with scrap fabric to show you what fabric I chose from. And I ended up choosing this beautiful pink and white seersucker fabric. And um, I know you guys probably saw this in the apron video. If you didn't see that video, link there, link there, right? Um, but I wanted to work with this fabric for such a long time. And when you guys chose print, I almost immediately was like, stripes count as print, I'm doing it. And I had about four yards of this fabric. And let me tell you, I used just about all of it. Now, I was still like in that vacation um, mindset and it's summer and I wanted something breezy and cute and it's a seersucker. So, you know, all those things were coming together. So I really quickly kind of knew what I was going to make, but I went through my, all my other patterns just to make sure, like, is this what you want to do with your treasured vintage fabric? And then I was like, yeah, it is. It so is. And that is, I chose to do the Charm Pattern Patreon exclusive picnic top. Now, um, a lot of you guys, I think, are familiar with Gertie and Charm Patterns. She also has a Patreon where every month she releases uh, an exclusive pattern on her Patreon. Honestly, her Patreon, how many times can I say Patreon, 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 is one of the best I've ever been a part of. And I've been doing it for, I think, since she started it. Essentially, this is a crop top pattern, but what I really love about it is there's actually two lengths to the crop top. One is the traditional, your belly is always going to be peeking out, but then there's a longer length version of it, which is going to hit right at the waistband. And only if you raise your hands above your head will your belly do a little cheeky peek out, right? And being on the plus size scale of things, I really appreciated having that versatility to it. And um, I love that it had the little perky puffed cap sleeves, square neckline, buttons down the front. This was just a super charming top and <laughs> charm patterns. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. But I, I had seen other people who had made this top and it was just so darn cute that I thought this would be the perfect project for it. And luckily, I knew I was going to have enough fabric to make a skirt out of it as well. Now, Gertie did also release a Patreon pattern for a gathered button-down skirt to go with the picnic top, 
but um, I was not in the mood to do a full button placard down the front of a skirt. I just wanted to do a full gathered skirt with, you know, pockets and just kind of call it a day. There's also one cheeky little twist that I wanted to make to both the top and the skirt, and that was adding this white rickrack. Now, I had just recently come off making JL's Dole Whip Disney Bound skirt, which I did a live stream on that, so if you wanna watch a bunch of showing, sewing in real time, go check that out. And um, I just wanted to, I thought it would be really cute to be peeking around the edges of the top and the skirt and everything. Now, the only thing is that I did choose white rickrack, and the pattern is kind of an off-white and pink, but I really kind of wanted it to stand out, and I felt like when I compared it to like an off-white rickrack, it just didn't look as good. It looked just a little dingy, and I wanted it to be a little bit more poppy pop, so I think it all worked out, but you can be the judge of that when you see the final project. So I know some of you are like, you know what, Jen? Shh. Shh, sew for us. Just shh, get to the sewing. Okay, this is a PDF pattern, which means that we have to put it together. So all we need is scissors and some tape and a little bit of time. There are guidelines and coded boxes that tell you where things should match up. So like I said, it's pretty easy. Even though PDF patterns can be a little time consuming to put together, I'm actually starting to find that I prefer them over paper patterns simply because of the fact that if I mess something up in doing some type of alteration or something, I can easily reprint the pattern. And if I gain or lose weight and I want to remake the item, I just have to reprint the pattern. I think there's a lot more versatility to it. And I don't feel like I have to trace a very delicate tissue pattern in order to preserve the original pattern. Am I the only one? Let me know if you prefer the tissue folded ones or PDFs. Now, if you're looking to find pattern weights as cute as mine, you will have to go to your local animal shelter and rescue the cutest ginger kitty you can find. Problem is with these pattern weights, they tend to move on their own sometimes. Now the first thing I always do when using a new pattern is I create a mock-up using scrap fabric. Yeah, Jen decided to do this really late at night. She was so tired, she didn't realize she was cutting it out of her real fabric until it was way too late. This, this mistake will come back to haunt me. You'll notice here with the waist start that I'm actually cutting the fabric out, which was something that was entirely new for me. I've only ever done darts where, you know, you fold it together and you stitch it down. And this technique is used a lot when there's going to be a lot of fabric in the dart. So to reduce any type of bulk that might be caused by that, especially since this is gonna be a lined dart, you don't want all that fabric at the waist. So it has you actually cut out what would be the bulk of the waist dart. I will say that I still was kind of like, am I doing this right? Am I supposed to do it this way? I double checked, triple checked, and went with it. And I was really excited about it. The next thing I had to do was convince my long-tailed assistant that it was time to transfer pattern markings. But clearly he, just like me, hates doing this. This is my least favorite part of sewing. I just have not found the technique that works the best. Um, I know some people do tacking methods. I try to do the chalk method, but it'll transfer some of the times, but not others. So if you guys have figured out the perfect way to do this, please, please tell me in the comment section below. Now that the dreaded pattern markings were transferred, it was time to sew up my darts. Now, the sewing up of the weird dart was no different really than sewing any other dart. I'm gonna stop this sewing progress for just a minute to remind you guys that I'm trying very hard to reach two goals this year, one of which is to reach 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube, and we are getting there. 
we're just chugging along so if you're not already please go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you've already done so thank you so so much I'm also trying to hit 10,000 followers over on Instagram so if you're not already following me there go ahead and check the link in the description and I'll see you over on Instagram back to your sewing and actually it was a little bit easier because all I really had to do was line up that cutout section and when I started pinning on the markings it actually matched up exactly with the opposite side of the fabric. It was about this time that I realized that I was making a mock-up and not the real top and I also realized that I cut out my real fabric so I got a little panicky, a little sweaty, um, and then just quickly sewed it up so that I could try it on and hope and pray that it fit right. Even though this is a cap sleeve, I definitely wanted to put the sleeves on for the mock-up because my arms tend to be a problem area in pattern fitting. So I definitely want to make sure that that is part of the mock-up. The following footage is me trying on the mock-up and then desperately trying to convince myself that with a few tweaks I can definitely make this fit just perfectly. The one thing that I was really really happy about on this mock-up is that the sleeve actually fit really well and you'll notice I only have the sleeve on the right arm because that is my bigger arm so I know if it fits there it'll fit on the other. It's just a quicker way for me to get into the mock-ups but you will notice that number one that the sleeve cap is actually falling way off my shoulder the other thing is you'll notice i already have the tops of the sleeves pinned up that's because everything was a bit too low and even though it looks fairly okay on screen it is just really baggy in the bust line so you can see all that extra fabric kind of coming in on the sides the other thing is that the top just fit around the waist so while it fit it definitely needed to be a little bit looser because we were going to line it and also I wanted to make sure there was no pulling on those buttons at the waistline so overall I thought I could salvage this top that I had cut out of the real fabric but when I got back to the sewing room and kind of wrote out all my adjustments and really sat and thought about them I realized that the problem really came from that entire bust area and that this was not a simple retweak here and there this was gonna be a you got to remake this you got to resize that bust area now the wonderful thing about Gertie's patterns is that her top patterns are not just based on size but they all also based on cup size so if you're cutting out an 18 there's an 18 a cup b cup c cup d cup da 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 da, da cups um and i wear a 36d and even in gertie's instructions she will tell you do not base it on your bra size you actually have to measure and do all the things and i'm like oh gertie i ain't gonna do that I know I'm a D cup. Um, no, I'm actually kind of on the cusp of a C and a D. And with that realization, I decided to size the cup to a C cup. Oh, this is my gray tailed. That's my gray tailed assistant. <laughs> And then I also decided to add some room to the waistline as well. So then what I did is I dug through my trash to find the pattern pieces for the B slash C cup, recut that out as a size 16, and then decided to grade the waistline from a 16 to an 18. And then cut that out of scrap fabric this time. This time I was... After stitching up the new mock-up and trying it on, I absolutely found that this fit so much better and solved so many of the issues with, with that bust line. The only thing this time is because I think it's because I kind of sized down in cup, it was a little bit too snug. So I needed a little bit more room all the way around the pattern. So then I decided what I was going to do with the final pattern was actually cut out a BC cup size 18 and then grade the waist to a 20. 
So what that entailed was me going back through the garbage to find all the pieces that I had cut off and then taping them back out. You guys, the number of times I had to dig through that trash to find like slivers of paper, you have no idea. So if you're doing PDF patterns and you're doing mock-ups, save everything you cut off. Don't toss it in the trash until you have your final pattern. And speaking of final patterns, this is what my final pattern ended up looking like. I really liked the way that the shoulder neckline sleeve area was, so I decided to keep that at a size 16. And then what I did is when I came to the side area, so which would be the bust in the waistline, I went out to the pattern size of 18. And then once I came down past the bust, I graded the, you can see the slope here, I graded from the size 18 to the size 20 to add that area of the waistline. Now, um, I ended up doing the dart at an 18 because that dart comes right up under the bust line and our bust line was cut out at a size 18 and the bust dart that we used was an 18 as well. So I kind of wanted to keep the darts on that 18 sizing and keep the waist at a size 20. Now that I have my pattern exactly where I want it, <laughs> I went ahead and cut out my real fabric again. Now, I'm not going to go and show you that whole process of cutting that out and stitching it all together, but I did want to kind of stop and show you putting in the cap sleeve because this was brand new for me and I kind of wanted to share that process with you guys. So, and I think this is mainly because of the fact that we're dealing with a lining, a fully lined top. To do the sleeve, I put the bodice on the table, right side up, and then I put the sleeve on top of it, right side down. So once I did that, I matched the center point of the sleeve to the very top of the shoulder, and then I went ahead and pinned the portion of the sleeve that was not gonna have any of the gathering or the puffiness, and I did that to both sides of the sleeve. So what that ended up leaving me with were these two like, loops of fabric on either side which then made it a lot easier for me to gather that down to the size it needed to be and also having that center point there made sure that the gathers were evenly distributed on the front and the back of the sleeve if that makes sense. And once that was all pinned down I simply took it to the machine and sewed it in place. And look at that poofy perky cap sleeve. Now I had to also create the lining for the top. I definitely did not have enough of the pink and white stripe, so I decided to go with a really, really lightweight white cotton. And unfortunately, the only white cotton I had here at the house was a heavier white cotton, so I did end up having to go to the store and purchase some lightweight white cotton. Now that most of the lining was assembled, I needed to address the rickrack. I needed that rickrack to be sandwiched between the outer portion of the top and the lining. So what I did is decided to sew it down to the lining of the top. So to do that, I wanted to make sure that, you know, part of that rickrack would be outside my seam allowance. So I chalked in a 5 eighths of an inch um, line in from the edge of my fabric. So that would be my guideline for putting my rickrack down. I don't know what happened there, but that's apparently all the footage I have of putting the rickrack on the top. I do do it again for the pocket of the skirt, so you'll see it a little bit more there. So that'll give you an idea of how after you sew it down, what it ends up looking like when you flip it over. I seriously don't know what happened because I know for a fact that I took footage of me doing the buttonholes and the buttons, yet no footage exists of that. So I guess we're just gonna move right on to the skirt. The first thing I did for the skirt was cut out the waistband and the pockets because I did not know how full or how long the skirt would be, but I wanted to make sure I had enough fabric for those two things. So 
what I did for the waistband is I just took my template that I use for all my skirts and cut that out. Now, if you want to know a little bit more about how I calculate my waistbands and how I attach them to skirts and kind of more of a step-by-step-by-step -by -step -by -step process, um, I am going to link to the second part of my live stream where I did a JL skirt that really walks through every bit of the process. Yeah, every bit of the process of a lot of what I'm doing on this skirt. For the pockets of the skirt, I was actually able to utilize that first muslin that I had made out of the real fabric. So all was not lost when I made that mistake. And I was really able to squeak out the four pieces for the patch pockets that I needed. For the pockets, I wanted to have the rickrack at the very top of the patch pocket. So I used the same technique as I used on the top where I just marked that 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance at the top, pinned, and then stitched down that rickrack. And when you're stitching it down, you really want to make sure that you're stitching straight down the middle. And then I sandwiched the two pocket pieces together with the rickrack inside and simply stitch all the way around the pocket, being sure to leave about an inch and a half of a gap at the bottom. You wanna make sure not to do that at the top of the pocket, but rather at the bottom. And then easily can I turn the pocket inside out and wha-bam, you got that rickrack right at the top of the pocket and she looking cute as heck. Now I just wanna talk about the length and the fullness of the skirt. I wanted to get as close to a three time fullness in the skirt as I possibly could. So I did a little mathing and determined that I needed about one and a half width of the fabric from selvage to selvage. So I knew that that would mean I needed three panels of fabric. So a panel and a half in front and a panel and a half in back because I would be doing a side zip on this skirt. <laughs> what I did then is I determined the length, which was 72 inches, and I simply divided that by three, and that gave me what my length on my skirt was going to be, and then simply cut out three of those panels. Now, because this is seersucker, it would not do the fabric rip that a nice cotton will do. So I actually had to measure down 24 inches, mark it, use my ruler to cut it across to make sure everything was nice and even. Once I had those three panels, I set two of those panels aside and then focus on one of the panels. Because what I wanted to do at this point was actually find the center of that panel and then simply just cut right down the center so now I had two panels instead of one. Took that over to the machine and sewed the full panel to the half panel for both the front and the back. Now before you go ahead and gather down the skirt, this is when you're gonna wanna put those patch pockets on because it's a lot easier to figure out where they need to sit when it is a flat panel. Then all I had to do was pin the pockets on and then stitch around the sides and bottom of the pocket. And what I always do as well is I do back stitch a little extra right at the top of the pocket because you just want to make sure if you are putting your hands into the pocket, that's really going to be where the stress is. And um, if you're really worried if your fabric is too thin, you can put a little interfacing on the back of where the pockets are gonna stick, sit, which will make them a little bit stronger if your material's a little bit lighter. And then pulled out one of my favorite inventions that have ever been made, and that is the ruffler foot. Now, there is no um, exact measurements on it, but the little screw in the front will actually uh, refine the ruffles, how close together they are. So I played around with that for a little bit and got it to the point where I knew it was doing about uh, three time and just ran the both of the panels through that to gather them up. And then all I needed to do was attach the waistband to both the front and the back of the skirt. This might seem a little strange for the order of operations, but what I did next is I actually did the hem of the skirt. Stick with me for a minute. I did a very, very small narrow hem at the bottom because I wanted to keep as much of that length as I possibly could. And then I went ahead and added the rickrack to the bottom of the skirt. 
The reason why I did this is because once I finished off those panels, I was gonna run the panel through the serger, which will give it that nice, neat edge to both sides. And that will also encompass the rickrack, which tends to fray a lot. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you can always use fray check on the ends of the rickrack and that'll keep it from further fraying. But I wanted a nice, clean finish, so I thought I would give that a try. Once the hem and the rickrack was done, it was time to insert the zipper, sew up the side, and finish off the waistband. I have to say, this may be one of my most favorite things that I have ever made. I absolutely love this top. I think the added touch of the rickrack to toot my own horn, I think was genius. I think it looks so incredibly cute. I did end up going with uh, clear buttons and they are fairly large buttons. They're one inch buttons on the top, but I didn't want to distract from the pattern and the rickrack. I really wanted that to be the star of the show. So I went with this, these textured, almost like uh, flower looking buttons, which I think worked out phenomenally. I love the cap sleeves and the little puff on the sleeves. Now I will say this is probably the only thing that I could have fixed on this because you can see that the cap sleeve still is falling a little bit off the crown of my shoulder. Uh, so when I make this again, and I definitely will make this top again, I am going to bring that in probably just by about a half an inch and it'll be a uh, perfection. I really, really love the way the skirt turned out as well. And fortunately, because I'm a shorty McShorterson, I still, I think the length still works with it being as short as it is. What I love about a good gathered skirt is it works really well on the days that you don't feel like wearing a crinoline because those gathers are still gonna give a lot of volume to the skirt. And I think patch pockets are just fun. Who doesn't love a good patch pocket? So that is it. I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. And as always, I love hearing from you. So go ahead in the comment section below. Let me know what you thought of today's sewing vlog. And if you've ever made this pattern before, I'd love to hear what your experience was with it. And if you thought I should have made it from some other fabric, let me know as well. I absolutely love doing this sew my stash and I am definitely going to be doing another one of these videos. So make sure to keep an eye out over on Instagram for, uh, you know, story polls. And of course, before I let you go, a huge subscriber shout out to Donna Higgs. Thank you so, so much for watching, liking, and commenting on my videos, and of course, being a part of our cozy little online community. Now, if you're going to miss this face between uploads, be sure and follow me on all the social media as a vintage vanity. If you want to keep watching this face, go ahead and click the video you see playing right there. If you don't want to miss anything that goes on on this channel, be sure and click that subscribe button so you'll be notified when new videos are posted. I hope you have a great day and I will see you soon. Bye.